Hello and welcome to What The Hey. Thank you very much for joining me to learn the answer to a question that I received. And when I go to my notebook of knowledge, I see that the question is written as, What the hey is la oveja? And this question comes from Julio as well as David. So hello to both of you and thank you very much for the question. So as you'll come to find, as I go down the list of the information that I'm going to present, the answer to this question isn't super basic. In my own experience of learning and gathering information to answer this question, I found that there are lots of layers to actually explain it in an efficient way. So I'm gonna go by the basic information that you can find pretty easily. And then towards the end of the video, kind of explain more of the lore and hopefully give you a good idea as to what we're talking about today. So first and foremost, once again, what we are talking about today in this video is La Oveja, who a lot of people generally recognize as an artist on YouTube. If you go to La Oveja's YouTube channel and go to the about section, what they kind of describe their content as being are videos that kind of give commentaries, reviews, analysis um, on different types of anime, manga, cartoons, a lot of stuff to do with anything related to art. Another way in which you may or may not recognize this person is by their account on Twitter. Most of the posts have to do, once again, with art or just general updates about their life. But if you want to check out either of these accounts, I will have their YouTube tagged in the description and I'll most likely have a link to their Twitter as well. So you can kind of do some personal research if you want to. But prior to explaining a lot of the lore and significance to La Oveja, I did kind of want to go over some of their channel details and just kind of explain what's on there, just in case you're curious but you don't have enough time to actually check the channel out. So La Oveja joined YouTube on June 18th of 2013. The channel has around 3.8 million views, around 35.8 thousand subscribers, and around 138 different videos. Aside from the main channel uploads, there's a few other features that you can check out. Like they have two community posts. The first one was random, um, just kind of like an introductory thing, I guess. And then the second one was kind of like a video upload update. So it's like if they wanted people to know what they were uploading, they could see that community post and find out. So that's kind of what those are. If you want to find a specific type of content from this channel, they do have a few playlists that you can kind of look through. There's ones with commentaries, uh, drawing videos, they have opinion-based videos, collaborations, and a few reviews as well. So if you are looking for something specific, they have an option for that. Another form of content that La Oveja has done in the past would be live streams, which if you're looking for something longer to watch, those are definitely pretty good because those usually range from like an hour to two hours, like two and a half hours or whatever. Um, and a lot of those are just drawing and interacting with fans. So if you like that kind of thing, those are there. So the next thing that I kind of wanted to briefly discuss is actually list a few examples of videos that are still on the channel. So if you have no idea what else to watch, you can check out these. Starting with the oldest video, which is titled The Sheep Analyzes Naruto, which was uploaded on November 11th of 2014. The newest video is titled The Sheep Reviews, which is uploaded on July 21st of 2022, which is roughly two years ago, and I'll kind of explain why that is. And then the most popular video is titled The Sheep Thinks Strong Characters vs. Mary Sue's, which was uploaded on July 6th of 2016 and has around 258,000 views. So for this final section of the video, what I'm going to do is explain some of like my first glance initial opinions about the channel and then I'll explain more of what I found out along the way. So when I first started to look through some of the videos, I thought the fact that they're like around 10 to 20 minutes is pretty fair in terms of runtime because a lot of the videos have to do with just sharing their general thoughts or like explaining a show or an animation or something. So the videos don't go super long and it's kind of nice because if you're not familiar with the content, generally La Oveja will like explain the history behind a cartoon or something and then give their thoughts on it. So like a video that's 10 to 20 minutes long seems pretty like that's fair. 
Next on the list, and I basically just said this, um, but a lot of the content on La Oveja's channel is stuff that I've never heard of before. Like, I personally watch and enjoy anime and manga and cartoons from time to time, um, so a lot of it I have a similar interest in, but a lot of it I've never seen or heard of before, so like hearing information about it from someone who actually seems to do a good job on explaining it is kind of fun. With regard to the art on their channel, from a general perspective, it's pretty neat. I personally enjoy people who make art and like put time into it. Um, and you know, La Oveja clearly has a certain style with their art. If you watch through some of their videos, they kind of explain their personal history with art, anime, and all that. Like they were kind of raised by shows like Evangelion and stuff. So you can kind of see that inspired to their like own art style and a lot of their videos have to do with discussing their upbringing and like childhood with art so that's kind of cool um so from someone who enjoys art it's fun to see that which in addition to having their Twitter account and their YouTube channel, you can find out that they have worked on comics with like creating characters and creating storylines for comic projects, which you can also look into that if you want to and I'll probably have that linked as well. Um, but now we can actually go into the interesting um, portion of the history of this video. So throughout this video, I've been referring to La Oveja by their like internet personality name, but their real life name would be David Rodriguez. Through a lot of their videos, we have learned about their personal life in the case of as a child, they dealt with a lot of like social isolation and bullying. And one of the main reasons as to why art, animation, anime is a big theme on La Oveja's channel is because they grew up watching shows like Evangelion and they could relate to some of the characters because they were kind of like neglected and bullying and like a social outcast as a child. So they talk about anime and shows that impacted them because that was a big aspect of their life. And by having an online presence, a lot of people say that around the age of 20, La Oveja was able to get connected with other friends and online creators, people like Dumentio. Which if you're not sure who Dumentio is, that's another content creator that I've discussed in the past. Um, but without having to say much, they're kind of a controversial online figure. But without going too much into it because it's super complicated, what you mainly need to know is that La Oveja kind of joined with this group called Phi, like P-H-Y. Um, and they were kind of a group along with like Dumentio that ended up moving to Mexico to kind of start this like animation art program together that didn't really have great crowdfunding behind it and it didn't really work out. Like, there was another YouTube channel that saw this locomotion group forming to try and get crowdfunding and basically called it out for being a scam. But you had La Oveja who moved over from Colombia, which is where they were originally born, to go over to Mexico to try and get this group started, but it didn't work out. So he was technically over in Mexico illegally and he was stuck there because his visa wasn't technically permanent, like it wasn't legit. And a lot of the issues that people have with this whole situation is the fact that La Oveja went over to Mexico before plans for their whole program weren't really solidified yet. So it was just kind of like a random spur of the moment, hopes and dreams kind of scenario. And without having a legitimate visa, it's very hard for La Oveja to find work over in Mexico because a lot of jobs won't take that kind of situation. So a lot of people tend to criticize La Oveja because they made the choice to move from Colombia over to Mexico without a super solid financial plan. Some of the people that La Oveja decided to move in with are recognized online as having far right extremist racist views that La Oveja like kind of denies, you know, recognizing that they don't agree with it. Even though in some of their videos you can kind of hear the distaste that La Oveja has for more, you know, like feminist libertarian views. So that's kind of interesting. And another thing that has been found out that a lot of people also dislike about the La Oveja situation is the fact that one of the people that like usually paid for rent and did a lot of the finances in the house that La Oveja stayed in, they caught La Oveja stealing from them. So that's also very unfortunate and difficult. There was another interesting situation with La Oveja where someone decided to kind of go undercover as a random woman on the internet with a Rapunzel profile picture and they tried to connect and become friends with La Oveja. 
And through that, the person learned a lot of personal information about La Oveja. They kind of learned about their location and that kind of turned into a doxing situation. And the undercover person shared all of this information with other people so it became a really embarrassing situation. But in general, I was super surprised to find out all of this information because when I was doing my personal research and looking through the channel, it kind of seemed normal. I kind of appreciated the art, um, but then people were kind of warning me that things were not as they seemed. Which I will also link two videos that I watched through that kind of explain the situation in so much more depth. Because, you know, when you look at the channel on the surface, it seems totally normal, but there's more to the person behind the channel than you initially think. Which is so interesting, and it's also very tragic. Which it's very unfortunate because if you look at the comments of La Oveja's most recent video, which is two years ago, which is quite a long time, kind of, from now. What a lot of them tend to say if you translate them is the fact that a lot of people are proud that they have done more than La Oveja has done in like their 30 years of living. And a lot of the other comments on this video kind of poke fun at the fact that La Oveja is not like a grown adult on the internet. So what you mainly need to know is that a lot of people criticize La Oveja and the way that their life is running now because of all of these, you know, short-sighted decisions that they made because of other people they met online who were already controversial figures. Um, so a lot of people don't have a great opinion on it. Which initially some people did want to sympathize with the situation because they had a content creator who's pretty good at art, you know, kind of go through some financial hardships. But as more information came out with like stealing and their artwork ethic not being great, and also their like unlikelihood of trying to change their situation with trying to move back to Colombia. Everyone was like, your situation is the way it is because you're making it that way. Um, so in general, it's very unfortunate. Which I feel like for me personally, I can't even explain the situation that well because it's so confusing and it has so many layers to it. So I will have two videos that I looked through and watched like linked in the description because there is so much information in the context of this history. And I also feel like it is a little unfortunate because for me, I was initially researching this topic and I thought it was totally normal. But then I looked through some of the comments about this creator. I was like, okay, things are as they seem. So I had to go through videos and try to translate things and like learn more and I did learn more. Uh, so, you know, it's always good to educate yourself but I believe that is the basic kind of confusing answer to the question. And once again, I'll have all the things linked and everything tagged. So if you want to learn more yourself, you totally can. Uh, but I believe that is it. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.